video recorded uh, and if you want to, if you are saying something to get the audio recording in uh, you will need to speak into a microphone if you wish to speak raise your hand and the microphone will come to you and wait for it to come um, that's the uh, order of business of the, of the meeting outside uh, there is a coffee flow uh, which you're welcome to use if you want to interrupt your your uh, proceedings uh, wander out grab a coffee there are also two smaller rooms out there where people can sit uh, and chat if they want at some stage um, and of course our coffee break will be taken outside so um, let you relax for a couple of minutes and uh, then come back on the air at nine o'clock to get things started Thank you. I'll leave it there to remind me to make that announcement.
Okay. The, the clock that I'm looking at says that it's nine o'clock, so that we should start our proceedings. Um, so, first up is a series of welcomes, and uh, I formally welcome you to this, uh, the 2017 meeting of the Council and Commission Chairs. Um, we are very pleased to be able to be meeting in Sao Paulo uh, as part, uh, as a preliminary to our General Assembly here in Sao Paulo later in the week. Uh, this is not the first meeting of Council and Commission Chairs to have been held in Brazil. There were meetings in that other place, Rio de Janeiro, uh, in 2007 and in 2012. Uh, it is the first time in Sao Paulo and the end of the week is our first General Assembly in Latin America. Um, the meeting has been organised by uh, the chair of C2, Vandalay Bagnato, uh, and uh, the local organising committee that he put together. Uh, and I invite Vandalay to say a few words of welcome to you. Good morning, everybody. First, uh, this uh, is uh, a pleasure to have you here in Brazil. And of course, uh, the Brazilians give a lot of importance to IUPAP. We have uh, almost uh, 10 members now, 10 uh, delegates. And this is actually organized by myself and Alinka Lepini, which is somewhere there. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, we originally thought to put in another place, but then the university offers a very nice facility that we can have the General Assembly, we can have the meetings here, and then we can have a workshop that starts on a Wednesday. And the idea of the workshop is to have a collection of views on all the areas that IUPAP have commissions. This will be framed, we're going to record, and we're going to make a collection of uh, uh, short movies that should be available to everybody about each commission. Uh, in this room, this is the room that uh, our president uh, carries the council meeting every month with the university. University of Sao Paulo is one of the largest universities in Latin America. We have uh, 90,000 students and an overall population, about uh, 140,000 people. We have uh, close to 5,000 faculties, and we cover all the areas of knowledge. And every month there is a meeting here that they try to put us on the track. I hope they are doing well. So that's the, the room we're using. And uh, we reserve uh, two rooms on the back. There are two meeting rooms with tables, chairs, sofa, because sometimes you want to go discuss something with your colleagues or you just want to rest. I know how the jet lag will take everybody, so you are welcome to go and, and just uh, take a moment for yourself. There are nice sofas and everything on two rooms on the back. We have permanently coffee, fruits, so uh, you, anytime you feel hungry or sleepy, you go and have a coffee. Brazilian coffee is very good and put you up. You have to take many shots constantly. You don't take a big jar. <laughs> and then uh, this gives you the right amount of caffeine that you keep going. Okay? Uh, we are here to serve you. We brought this meeting to Brazil because we want to collaborate with IUPAP. It's not IUPAP that's collaborating with us, so anything you need is not working. We are here to try to make work. 
So please, uh, me and Alinka are here to help you with anything you want. We have a couple of people around that are supposed to help us. We have Rosie, uh, which is the girl taking care of the registration and everything, and she was the one that put together the food and everything, so if it's good, you have to thank her. We have Rodrigo, it's a boy that's going to help us too with the microphone. And, uh, well, I hope uh, the meeting goes well. We have uh, all the official meetings uh, during the whole week, but Wednesday afternoon we have the workshop in this room. It's supposed to be in other room, but this can afford 200 people, so we decide to do here too. So we don't have to move people around uh, too much. We're going to have a lunch served here. So at the end of the morning section, everybody is welcome to go. The lunch will be served. You help yourself, and then you relax. You have uh, at least one hour to chat with other people or to just walk a little bit or sit down and think, answer your emails or anything you want, and then we return for the afternoon. This will be the dynamics of the whole week, and I, I hope you all enjoy and any question you have about Brazil, I know that sometimes people get scared. Don't worry, we are in a safe place. Uh, you should not take a taxi and go to places that was not recommended. But I think this is true for any city. So, well, I hope uh, everything goes fine. So now I think Bruce will give a continuation to the meeting. Thank you very much and uh, let's all have a nice meeting here. Thank you very much to the University of Sao Paulo for hosting us and to Vandalay and Alinka for uh, putting all this together and all the organizational work of, of uh, getting us here and uh, getting us settled in and looking after us when we're here. So thank you for that. Uh, the work of IUPAP and uh, of course is in supported in Brazil by the Brazilian Physical Society and the Vice President of the Brazilian Physical Society, Rogero Rosenfeld, uh, will welcome us on behalf of that host. Rogero. one that says push. Okay. <laughs> so good morning everyone and uh, it's a pleasure to host uh, the General Assembly of uh, IUPAP for the first time in Latin America and I was asked to give a short 15 minutes presentation about physics in Brazil. So if uh, someone can put up the slides or should they do it from here? What should they do? I do it from here? It's from there. Oh, yeah, I can do it from here, okay. All right, um, can you see it? So my name is uh, Rogério Rosenfeld. I work in particle physics and cosmology at the Institute of Theoretical Physics at UNESP. And also I'm uh, working with the, uh, um, at the uh, South American Institute of Fundamental Research, which is an agreement with the CPP in Trieste. And I'm going to say first a few words of welcome. So yes, so welcome to Brazil and especially to Sao Paulo. Give us some a few a few numbers. So about Brazil, we have a population of 210 million people. We are the fifth country in population in the world. Our GDP is 2.1 trillion dollars. So it's the eighth economy in the world, and uh, it's a big country. So it's the fifth uh, country in, in in area in the world. Sao Paulo, the state of Sao Paulo, has a population of 43 million people. And in the city of Sao Paulo, there are 12 million people. So it's a, it's a big city. 32% 30, of Brazil's GDP is from, from the state of Sao Paulo. And Sao Paulo hosts uh, uh, three state universities. The University of Sao Paulo, this one. And the State University of Sao Paulo, the one I work at. And then the University of Campinas, Unicamp. Now, Sao Paulo is a big city. It can be intimidating. This is a view of Sao Paulo. You cannot see much of the city. <laughs> 
because of the, of the uh, atmosphere conditions. As you, but this is from a park in the outskirts of the city, if you have some time and you can go there. So it's a big jungle of uh, buildings. These are some of the uh, uh, highlights of the city, the uh, Museum of Modern Art at Paulista Avenue. I'm sure you can. So it's, it's a nice place. You can go around. And uh, there's, this, is the, uh, this is the Ibirapuera Park. This is the, uh, um, the, memorial of the Latin American Memorial, which was designed by Oscar Niemeyer. Maybe you heard about this uh, famous Brazilian architect. So it's a big city. It can be intimidating. But believe me, it's a city full of cultural activities, uh, it's a very cosmopolitan city. Everybody looks like a Brazilian, this I can tell you. <laughs> so it's, it's really a great place. I hope you will enjoy it. Now I'll talk a little bit about science in Brazil. So the early science institutions in Brazil uh, were the Ob National Observatory, which was founded by our emperor just after the independence from Portugal, Dom Pedro I, in 1827. So this is going to be the 150th anniversary of the uh, National Observatory. The Brazilian Academy of Sciences was founded in 1916. And here's a picture of uh, a visit of Albert Einstein in 1925 that he stopped in Rio. And this is pretty much the whole Brazilian community of scientists uh, <laughs> at the time, physicists and mathematicians. So it was a small, very small community. Um, so systematic research in physics in Brazil started very recently. So it started basically with the founding of this university, University of Sao Paulo, in 1934. And uh, this was uh, with the hiring of an a, a Italian, Russian-Italian physicist, Gleb Batagin, who came here and uh, formed a school of very bright students who later became leaders in the, in the field. So Cesar Lattes, who maybe you know, was involved in the discovery of pions. Mario Schemberg, maybe you heard about Urca processes in uh, supernova. So Urca is not an, as you know probably, is not an acronym. It stands for uh, a casino that used to exist in Rio. And this is a process where neutrinos would steal energy from, the, uh, from stars. So it's like money disappearing in the casino. So Schoenberg uh, uh, decided to put, and this was work of actually Schoenberg and George Gamow. I forgot to mention this. And then there's Schoenberg and the Sacker mass limit for stars, etc. And uh, Thielman and Leite Lopez, who worked on weak interactions, etc. So it was a, this was the first generation of Brazilian physicists, and uh, Gleb Batagin had a great role in forming them. In 1939, and the uh, National Faculty of Philosophy in Rio was uh, started. 1948, the Brazilian Society for the Advancement of Sciences. 1949, very importantly, was the founding of the uh, Brazilian Center for Physical Research in Rio de Janeiro by these uh, former students of Gleb Batagin. Uh, so Leite Lopes and uh, Cesar Lattes had a very important role in the founding of the center in Rio. And this is just a picture to show a visit of uh, Feynman, who, as you probably know from his books, he came to uh, Rio. He spent a year in Rio. So if you, want to, if you wonder where is Feynman in this picture, he's the one sitting between these two uh, physicist ladies. Uh, <laughs> In 1950, uh, there was the foundation of uh, an important institute of technology um, by the uh, uh, aeronautics. 1950 was also the foundation of the uh, Theoretical Physical Institute, where I actually work. And 1951 saw the uh, starting of funding sciences by the National Research Council, CNPQ today, and also uh, forming uh, um, students. So this is an agency that was uh, intended to help in the graduate programs in Brazil. And finally, in 1966, the Brazilian Physical Society was uh, started. As you can see, uh, physics in Brazil is a very recent uh, endeavor. So today, we have uh, 60 uh, graduate programs in physics and astronomy. So this is a big uh, improvement. Last year, we produced, on average, one new PhD in physics every day. It's not bad, huh? And we have around 5,000 physicists, which are members of the Brazilian Physical Society. We, contributed, we contribute to 2% of the physics papers worldwide in Brazil. And 50% of the papers uh, produced in Brazil, they have international collaborators. So it's a very uh, interactive uh, community that we have here. We participate in large collaborations. You can find Brazilians participating in almost any international collaboration. It's amazing. Um, and more than we, the, these papers have impact, which is uh, around two times the world average impact, which is really impressive also. But, and there's a big but, which uh, just talk a little bit about it. 
Very recently, we are uh, suffering a budget crisis. So we had a 44% cut to federal science budget, which was announced this year, March this year, and, and uh, by the government. So those are some measures uh, to uh, reduce the deficit. But in, on average, the uh, cut in the budget was 28%. So science was more effective, it was 44%. And uh, the Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation, and Communication, so the merger of communication was also something recent, uh, has its lowest budget in at least 12 years. An additional 15%, 15.5% cut is, has been proposed for the uh, 2018 budget of the country. So this is, this, is, this is really catastrophic. There is no other word to say. And recently, uh, in September 29, there was a letter signed by 24 Nobel, Nobel Prize winners to the president of Brazil, just, uh, 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 you know, uh, um, trying to advise him not to do this cut because this, this, is, this can really be um, very, very harmful to science in Brazil. And uh, maybe UPAP can help, IUPAP can help. I think uh, we, hear, we hear some more about this also in trying to uh, uh, make the president aware of the uh, risks of having these very large cuts. So if you were here on Sunday, this was a, a march for science. Uh, so this was yesterday on Paulista Avenue, and we have a, a large demonstration of people just protesting against these, uh, these cuts. Anyway, so uh, the Brazilian Physical Society uh, uh, wishes you a very uh, productive meeting, and uh, I hope you have a very nice stay in Sao Paulo. Thank you. Will you take questions? I can take questions, sure. Does anyone wish to ask any questions? No questions? Well, thank you very much. You. Uh, let me make a couple of comments. Uh, the first one is to say that uh, council members will notice in their papers that we are planning to move a resolution uh, about the funding crisis for science in Brazil. Uh, and so we are taking up the invitation that Rogero gave us to, uh, to do something about that. We'll see what we can do. Um, and uh, the second thing I, I want to say is that to uh, emphasise, Rogero, that you're very welcome to stay as an observer for as long as you can tolerate uh, <laughs> uh, in, in these proceedings. Um, so let me come back online here. Um, so there are a number of people who are not regularly at the meetings of council and commission chairs and I'll just run through them and ask them to uh, put their hands up so people can recognise them. Uh, C8 is being rec represented by Belita Collier. She was here earlier. Then. Oh, thank you, Belita. Uh, C16 is being represented by Ming Kuan Tran, who's familiar to us because he's represented C16 on other occasions. And Beverly Berger is representing AC2. Uh, Simone Kuldovich is representing AC4. Good, thank you. Uh, and this meeting is different in that we invite working group chairs to come along and some have decided to accept the invitation I'm not sure whether they're here today or not. I didn't look at when they were actually arriving, but uh, Jochen Minch, working group, good, thank you. Uh, Igle, I saw last night. Yes. Uh, John Ozaki, good, thank you, good to see you. Uh, Bob Trudel, I know, is coming later, but is, is Wim here yet? No, okay. Uh, Leah Merminger, good. good to see you, Leah. Uh, Michael Rubenstein, he's coming later. He's arriving about lunchtime. So, um, and then we ha we also have a number of invited observers. Um, Barbara Rasmus, uh, representing Ixu, and going to talk to us about the merger. She was here, yes. 
Barbara, thank you. Uh, Laura Green will be arriving a little later, I believe, uh, but Amy Flatten is here already. Go, Amy. Uh, Xing Zhu is representing the uh, Association of Asia Pacific Physics Societies, and he is here. Um, John Andian, uh representing the African Physical Society. I don't know if he's here yet or not. Okay. Uh, and it happens that uh, we have just one nominee nomination for the position of president-designate, uh, Michel Spiro, the current president of the French Physical Society. And uh, he, as it happens, is here all week. So I've invited him to come along to the council meeting as an observer. I believe that will be uh, a big help to IUPAP for him to be around for these two days. And I hope it also helps him. Michel, thank you very much and welcome. Um, what we'd often do is do a short introduction around the table of uh, various of the other members uh, and um, I think it's helpful if we just go around um, the uh, let me just do the officers first uh, Kennedy Kennedy Reed the president designate and by uh, Friday afternoon, he'll be the president. Um, the uh, uh, Secretary General uh, is an apology, but uh, Quek Long Chan will be uh, is our Assistant Secretary General. He will be filling in for the Secretary General. Uh, and the Associate Secretary General, Rizani Matadi, is on my left here, so he's uh, and that our, we have an apology from Cecilia Yalskog, the past president, who is unable to be with us. Uh, then we come to the vice presidents. I'm not quite sure who's, who's managed to arrive yet. Um, Alex, I've seen. Alex Hansen, right. Um, Monica. Pepe Altale, uh, who else is the Vice President who's here? Uh, we have Vice Presidents of Commission Chairs, but Vice Presidents of Commission Chairs, John Saunders, um, uh, thank you. Right. Is Vitali here? Oh, good, good. Right, this is not in, in right order. Okay, um, and so let, let me go around the commissions. C2 you've heard from because uh, our host is, is the uh, chair of C2, uh, Vandalay. Uh, C3, uh, Otomar, uh, and C4, Karl Heinz. Uh, C5, oh here. No, C4, C, so, sorry, getting them out of order. John C, is C5 and C6. So, uh, uh, and we don't have a C7. Uh, at, uh, so C8, as I mentioned, is being represented by Belita. Uh, C9, Jiaofeng. Uh, C10 is Rainian, uh, who's also vice president from the commission chairs. C11 is Wan, he's here somewhere, yes. Uh, C12 is Alinka, which you've already seen. Uh, C13 is Sandro. Uh, that's C14 education is Heidi Onita. He was, yes, up there. Um, C15, Toshiyuki, good girl. Uh, C16, we've already met. Uh, uh, C17 is Deb Kane. 
C18 is Manfred, right, uh, and C19 is Grazina, and C20 uh, is Hai Queen Lee. So. Thanks. Um, the um, then on the uh, affiliated commissions, the AC1, uh, the chair of that, uh, was, is unable to be with us. Um, AC2 is being represented by Beverly, that was introduced before. AC3, Marion Burgess is, is here, yes. And AC4 is being represented by Simone, that uh, we introduced before. Uh, and we've gone through working groups. Uh, we also have present the vice chair of, of C2, Bill Phillips, who's sitting here in the front. Uh, so I think that uh, covers everybody's here. Is there someone present that didn't get a mention? No, good. So uh, the f we have a number of formal matters to do. Uh, the agenda has been distributed uh, on the web, uh, like all of these things, it gets changed every time you look at it. But uh, I think uh, if anyone has any additional items that are not on the agenda that they think should be on the agenda and they want added, uh, then they should uh, talk to me about it or send an email to uh, the admin address. Um, to make that clear. But if, does anyone think they want to add anything at this stage that's not there? And there's that ubiquitous item at the end of the agenda which says items of any other business. Uh, and if anyone wants to add anything during the meeting, they can let me know and we'll try and stick it in there if we've got any time left. Uh, and I've talked about some of the apologies already. Uh, and uh, so, um, but um, so, if, uh, and I've listed them here for uh, your information. Some of you may be able to remember back to a year ago when we met in Taipei, uh, and we have put the uh, minutes of that meeting up on the web some time ago. Uh, and there's a link here to them. Uh, I won't click on the link and bring them up. Uh, I hope uh, you've read them at some stage during the past uh, nine months or so and uh, have communicated to us any concerns you have. But if there are any further concerns that you think uh, should, corrections that should be made, uh, please let us know. If anyone has any corrections of a significant content matter, do they wish to bring them up now? And minor corrections, if you find them when you read them again, it, it, I find that these documents are, are such that every time I read them I find something that, some small thing that I think could be, could, could be changed, so I don't read them very often. Uh, but uh, if, if you do see something, please let us know. Uh, one of the things that the uh, council does, it's actually quite illegal. Uh, we have various matters that we decide that we should make a decision on by an email poll of the council. Uh, there's nothing in our statutes that permits us to do anything like that and perhaps we should get around to revising our statutes to permit it, but when I talked about, when I was president-designate and talked about revising the statutes, I was told to forget it. Uh, so I've forgotten it. Uh, the, what, the pro, the, but in this day of modern communications, there's no reason why we shouldn't take advantage of them. And um, so what the council's been doing is to, uh, as various... Um, electronic votes, sometimes discussion plus votes, sometimes just a vote, uh, to 
agree on various matters. Um, the, the, you can find a list of these uh, at the, the link down here. But um, the, uh, the list is here. In December, we agreed to the terms of reference for a, for a joint working group to examine the criteria used to verify claims for the discovery of new elements uh, with the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Uh, we, in February, we made official statements about the um, executive order on border security in the US. Uh, we were very concerned and remain, to be, and remain concerned about the uh, fact that some of our conferences may be disrupted by this, uh, but uh, so far I believe I haven't heard of any significant disruptions. Uh, in February, we agreed to increase the number of shares uh, for, of India to 15 shares, uh, and in March we agreed to increase the number of shares of Singapore to two shares. Uh, we found that there was some confusion about when there was a retiring commission member and a replacement commission member about whether the term was counted as a, as a service for a term and they could serve just one more term or whether it was uh, not counted. And uh, council decided to, uh, that the ruling should be that if the replacement person is appointed in the first half of the term, uh, they should be counted as serving that term. And if they're appointed in the second half of the term, uh, they're not counted for future service as, as having served that term. Um, and uh, we set up uh, the interim working group on soft matter physics uh, that we were supposed to do earlier and uh, it got tied up in various things and we only set it up in April. Uh, and we agreed to support uh, our bid uh, to that 2022 become the National Year for Basic Science and Development, Basic Science for Development. Um, it happens that 2022 is our centenary year. It happens that all, it's also the centenary of the Nobel Prize to Niels Bohr. Um, and uh, we appointed the, the individual members of the interim working group on soft matter physics. Uh, so formally, I now ask Council to, in, in this meeting, to ratify the uh, items that have, it has approved by email. So those in favour of doing so? Council members? Those, um, those against? Let's count. Okay. Anyone not want to do any of it? Right. So that's agreed. Um, I think I picked up any matters that are arising from the previous minutes in the papers of the meeting. Uh, if, if anyone finds that there's something missing, has found there's something missing, uh, let me know now and we can talk about it. Is there anything anyone wants to bring up at this stage? Okay, thank you. Uh, so the next item, let me see how we're going for time, right on time. <laughs> uh, the, uh, is the report by the President and uh, I've been writing articles about IUPAP over the past uh, 12 months uh, in two of them appeared in our uh, in our newsletter uh, one on uh, what does IUPAP do for f physicists in the June newsletter uh, that was a kind of decadal update of an article of the, essentially the same title that the then President uh, Jan Nielsen wrote uh, in uh, 1996. So it's a 20 year update on it. And um, the, then in the September newsletter, uh, which you will have picked up just now, or you got sent to you on a uh, link on the web. 
a little while ago, uh, I wrote uh, some reminiscences about being president. Uh, and in uh, the current physics today, uh, I wrote a commentary article on uh, are you Pap and you for um, to introduce or remind physicists, particularly US physicists, what IUPAP is about. Um, and I don't want at this stage to repeat any of that. And in the uh, theme of working on this meeting, it's a, vi it's a busy meeting and we have to assume that people read the papers. Uh, so uh, those were not in the papers, but they've been distributed. I hope you've read um, at least some of them, glanced at them. What I do want to do in this pres presidential report is, uh, is to emphasise the very significant contributions that the past president, Cecilia Yaskob, made to them bringing IUPAP into the 21st century. Uh, she was instrumental in producing budget stability and budget sustainability into IUPAP. Uh, she organised with a, a fellow Swede who's the current president of the Nanyang Technological University the move of the office to Singapore at, uh, at also at the invitation of our current Secretary General. Uh, she paid a lot of attention to uh, putting IUPAP to work on in improving the number of women physicists and the experience of women physicists as physicists. She did a lot of frustrating work on the interaction uh, between IUPAP and IUPAC regarding new, the discovery of new elements and I'll say a bit more about that later on in the meeting, later at the very last item on today. Uh, and she also made the General Assembly uh, more interactive and less a passive venue for receiving reports. I'm not sure I'll be able to follow her example on that, uh, but it was an excellent example. And uh, so from all, from all of us, on, I, I, I wish to record our thanks. We, we do owe a deep debt of gratitude. Uh, much has been going on since we last met um, and that will come up as we work through the agenda. I don't want to give a long report here. Um, I, I will give a, a longer report to the General Assembly uh, and, uh, but uh, you may have recognised that this article uh, three years as president of IUPAP is a, is a draft go at a presidential address. The uh, the next item is the report from the Secretary General. So, quick. Right. Uh, I'm just representing uh, Professor KK Poa from who is currently the Secretary General for the IUPAP. So, do you want this up? Yeah. So this is a brief report about the state of affairs for the year 2017. The financial statements will be circulated later on and will be covered in detail on under a separate agenda. We, of course, would like to register our thanks to my three, Bob. All of you know for assuming most of IUPAP secretariat work. Uh, erring on for helping with the design of the newsletters and other publication materials, and Tomia for the IT support. Uh, granted that it is still under improvement, uh, and the online nomination and election processes, it can be improved, but I'm sure uh, you all uh, have experienced the difficulty and maybe perhaps uh, uh, convenience of the process. 
Aside from my tree, we register our thanks also to Dr. Sun Han, who has contributed immensely to the work of the Secretariat, although she is officially uh, staff of uh, World Scientific. Um, the IOPEP now has its own physical premise at NTU, and I welcome you to visit the office. And MOE has recently been signed, so it takes nearly three years between the presence of NTU and IUPOP. The document will be circulated as well. The IUPOP has a Twitter account and also a Facebook account. The Twitter account was actually started by IOP. The newsletter, as you have seen for the last three years, the Secretariat has been pushing, and uh, a lot of work is due to Bruce. Uh, the, we have published something like 10 issues of IUPAP since then, and I hope you enjoy reading the newsletters. Uh, if you have any comments on how to improve the newsletter, please let us know. Uh, significant progress has been made to encourage Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Brunei, and Indonesia to join IUPAP as members. It is not easy. Uh, as you can see, uh, they are still not members yet, but uh, I think it needs uh, continued effort from IUPAP to engage them. Uh, I know that Vietnam and Thailand have already uh, approached their government regarding uh, how to pay the subscription. IUPAP Young Scientist Prizes have been awarded to the following people, Julian Citaret, C4, Frank Stroder, C4, Hicks Clifford, C5, Blood Bribiet, uh, C5, Tui uh, Tu Chang, C10, Yun uh, Yuk, uh, C6, Xi Yuan Wang, C6, uh, Jia Jie Diao, uh, C6, uh, Johan Fiest, um, C15, Igor Haranovich, uh, C17, Mozen Ramani, C17, Pratika Daya, C19, uh, Glenn Evanly, C20, and Aaron Wall, C, AC2. Uh, we congratulate them on their awards. The, there is also an inaugural C13 prize, which was given to Professor Jorge Flores Vlade for his outstanding work along 50 years towards the development of physics and scientific institution and the popularization of science in Central America. Uh, IUPAP congratulate the winner. IUPAP and the Union of Crystallography have successfully won a 300,000 uh, uh, 300, uh, euro ICSU grant for the proposal on the utilization of light source and crystal the logographic sciences to facilitate the, en the enhancement of knowledge and improve the economic and social conditions in targeted regions of the world. Uh, this project is led by Sakazi Mitwa and also uh, Chair of uh, C13, Sandro Scandolo, and Michelle Zima from uh, Crystallography uh, Union. So I will leave you to read about the advanced light source being playing a pivotal role. Um, we all know that it's important, but it's also important to develop it in developing countries. Uh, working Group 5 also put in significant effort to put up a proposal on a global approach to the gender gap in physics, chemistry and mathematics. Uh, it was successfully championed by IMU and IUPAP because IU, IUPAC, uh, because IUPAP has already been a lead for uh, the other project, uh, so we could not uh, be a lead for two projects. However, uh, this is significantly an IUPAP uh, proposal, and uh, uh, members of the Working Group 5 have put in a lot of effort to craft the statements and uh, uh, as well as a proposal. Uh, obituary, we, uh, we are we're missing um, 
Professor Yoshi Yamaguchi, a former, he's the a past president of IUPAP. In fact, he's the first Japanese to be elected as the president of IUPAP. He passed away in August 26, 2016. Uh, IUPAP is also saddened to learn of the death of Pierre Binitri on uh, April the 1st, 2017. He served on C4 Commission on Astroparticle Physics since 2014. Uh, I think that's it. Come on, everybody. Yes, Tim Fun. Yeah, uh, I just propose to proposing that we probably should give a deadline to have this young scientist award. All right. Because for for example, C9, we are currently right now still doing that. Yeah. So uh, I see also some missing in the list. Sure, sure. So if yes. we can have a kind of a deadline for all the commission, mm. then we'll submit before that. So that's just a It will be proposal. in the next report. Yeah, that will be for the next. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so. so we don't miss any, any commission. So the uh, young scientist winners will be reported in the next, if it's not due for this CNCC meeting. Thank you. Other questions? Comments? Uh, if not, then we can close that and go back to my spreadsheet. Okay. So the, the next item is discussion of, of uh, the slates that are prepared that have to be prepared for. Right. Next item on uh, business is the discussion of the slates which have to be prepared for the uh, General Assembly. Um, this item, we're running slightly ahead of time and uh, it's scheduled for a significant length of time. It may or may not take that time, it depends how much people want to talk. Uh, but I, for, I will uh, invite the observers uh, to leave for the, at this stage because the, uh, this is a, a matter of uh, where uh, personal, quest personal points could be made about various possible people. So. Uh, technically, yes, but I, I, I'm, I'm happy for you to stay. I don't think you're. You, you, technically, yes, but if you if you wish to stay, you're welcome to. Okay. Um, mm, it's okay. Okay. Uh, Rizzani is just reminding me that I need to remember to get the microphone close to my mouth when I'm trying to talk into it. Um, it's, uh, it's almost like the ones we had in one other meeting where you had to behave like a, a rock singer and have the microphone halfway down your throat before it took, the <laughs> took any registration. Uh, the as you know, as Commission Chairs know, the, ch the Chairs are invited, uh, required in fact, to produce their recommendations to the um, General Assembly on who should be on their Commission. Um, the General Assembly asks the Council to prepare a slate of nominees for the, for the Commission. So the Council is meant to look at the recommendations that are produced by the Commissions 
uh, and adjust them if it feels necessary. A slate, of course, refers to the old-fashioned way of having a, a piece of originally slate on which you wrote. And I am old enough, and I went to a primitive enough school that when I was in elementary school, that is how I learned to write, on a piece of chalk on a slate. Um, and the, the reason why it's called, it's called a slate in this context is that uh, it can, if necessary, be erased and started over again. The, the reason that um, the General Assembly may wish to make adjustments to what it receives from commissions is that, of course, each commission chair and each commission in, in looking at who should be their successors uh, looks at what's best for their commission and what's the best way to, to do that, put it together. And we have 18 commissions doing this independently. We, we also have a notional rule that each member country should have the number of representatives on commissions which is equal to its number of shares. Now, that's a rule we cannot enforce because at the moment we have 261 shares subscribed to and we are able to appoint 251 people to commissions so that there's no that we somebody going to have to miss out but it gets more complicated when some uh, of our countries get significantly more uh, nominees recommended than they have shares. And this time around, uh, it was interesting that by and large the countries that got very significantly more um, offers for shares, offers for nominations from the commissions than they have shares are um, one, one significant one is where we're sitting. Um, Brazil has eight shares and from the commissions it received 15 nominations. Uh, South Africa is another one that stood out. They have three shares and from commissions they received seven nominations. Um, there were a few others uh, that stood out in the same way. Um, Spain uh, had eight shares and 14 nominations. Okay, let, let me tell you that. Thank you for asking. Uh, one of the requirements we had this time was that you produce, we asked you to produce uh, four or more women members of your commission. So F records the number of women. Um, the, and then on the, on the other side, there were a number of uh, members who had significantly less uh, nominations than they had um, shares. Um, One sometimes delicate one is Russia. Um, Russia only made 17 nominations. It has 18 shares. Uh, and it uh, received only... Where, where, where's Russia on this one? Uh, it received uh, only 14 um, recommended positions from the commission chairs. Um, 
there were others that were significantly under. Uh, one, which I'll draw to your attention, is Norway, uh, which where were we? three shares and only one and zero rec recommendations from commissions. That that was not the fault of the commission chairs. That was the fault of the the liaison for Norway who didn't make any nominations and uh, we had to drum up some nominations. I thank Alex for his help in, 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 in doing that. Um, so the, the reason why the General Assembly looks at this and tries to even it out uh, is that in the past history there have been occasions when we've upset some of our members sufficiently that they've been very reluctant to pay us their dues. Um, and it, it does feel that, that it needs a, a good geographical representation of physicists uh, if it's going to be truly internationally re representative. So as I said, council is required to make recommendations to the General Assembly about who, who they should be electing to the commissions and uh, it has had various different ways of doing it which have, have, um, when I first became a member of council back in 2006, uh, the um, through that three year period on council I didn't learn anything about how council decided this matter. The President and the Secretary General came in and said this is our slate. Um, the, for the last round the council decided to appoint a small committee, a nomination subcommittee to provide it with suggestions about what the slate should be and then could discuss those. And that process was done for the 2014 General Assembly and it's in process, the same process is in, in underway now for, the, for this General Assembly. So that um, The nomination subcommittee is chaired by the president designate uh, on principle that he's the person that has to put up with the commissions that get produced by this committee so he'd better have a role in it. And uh, so I'll ask Kennedy to take over and talk about the slate. This is what's on the screen. It's mirroring you, yeah, right? Okay. So turn on. So the um, step committee met last month in Singapore. Seems like it was only a week ago. Two weeks. 
the same same things. <laughs> <laughs> and um, spent uh, basically three days um, working with the slates that had been submitted uh, by the liaisons and the uh, commission chairs. And <clears throat> did a complicated act of balancing. I'm sorry. Uh, can't move it over. There, there you go. C2, 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 yep. Okay. And so what we have now is the results of uh, two and a half days to almost three days of um, juggling uh, for geographic balance and looking at shares and uh, making sure that people, uh, commissions had um, uh, recommendations in line with the number of shares. And what I have now is uh, all of the uh, slates uh, for each of the commissions uh, um, that we ended up with. Now, I think that all of these were sent to commission chairs, uh, but now we'll just go through them and um, the group can see the slates for each, um, for each commission. And when we're done, uh, with doing that, I suppose there will be some discussion and we will see if we can have a set of slates here to pass on to the General Assembly. So I'll just go through them one by one. I'll just put them up for your viewing. So the first one there is C2. And unless there's some comment, uh, questions, we can do it. The microphone needs to be coming. Um, I understood that if there were less than four nominations that were female for each commission, that the commissions were asked to make additional nominations. Did that not happen in this case? Commissions were reminded of their obligation to produce four women members on the commission. Um, the C2, I was pleased to see C2 produce two because C2 started out with none and I, I can't remember when it ever had any. Uh, so uh, I was happy enough to see the overall result being an average of more than four women per commission on average. Mm -hmm. And uh, I pushed commissions to get to four, uh, but we didn't reject the situation if they didn't get there. Some commissions clearly worked harder at, at, than others, and also some liaisons got the idea that if they nominated a good woman, they had a much better chance of getting them on the commission. But I, I have to say that uh, overall, uh, there's a notice, noticeable increase in the, the number of um, women nominations. And I think that Bruce made some comment to that in an email to the commission chairs, um, um, observing that fact and uh, complimenting the group on that improvement. Can I interrupt you? Go. Can I interrupt you, Kennedy, to follow that on with another comment? I, I have certainly compliment commission chairs on finding women for commission memberships. 
I was disappointed that only two of the new nominations for chair are women, which is going backwards. Note it. <laughs> okay. So C2, and now moving on to C3. Eagle? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, thank you. Um, from the point of view of Working Group 5, I would point out that IUPAP does have a Working Group on Women in Physics, which has offered to make connections if uh, liaison organisations or commissions are unaware of which women are in their fields or how to find women in their fields. Is there another comment or question? John. So following on that reference to national liaison committees, that's another perspective to monitor the journey towards uh, our aspirational what seems to be aspirational uh, number of commission members as being women. And that is you not only look at um, these slates, but you also look at national liaison commission nominations in terms of the proportion of women that they've proposed, since that's the origin in the first instance of the nominations. And what, what we've been asked to do as chairs is to, as it were, take action to correct that but, but the root is not these slates it's how the, NL, uh, the National Liaison Committees function so it's about a dialogue between IUPAP and them on this matter I'm just, I think I'm echoing Eagle's point I would point out that there's a lot of while there's help from the Working Group on Women in Physics was offered, there's also a lot of data that's available to, to the liaison committees and to the chairs. It's, it's open to chairs, and num some committees do, approach the liaison committees to make nominations of particular people. Uh, both groups of people have access to the information about who were uh, the major speakers at the major conferences and so that another source of possible women that they can look for is the, is the women in that list of speakers at the conferences and that was also pointed out to liaisons as a possible source of women uh, to nominate well Uh, yeah, but same time, I should. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why it's not opening at the top, but uh, there it is. Okay. Okay, so anyway, I think that both of those are useful comments uh, for uh, future reference. Uh, thank you, John and Eagle. Um, so now we're up to C3, and there are no comments. I'll proceed on to C4. Well, there were comments were taken up with a continuation. Comments were taken up with a continuation of discussion of women in physics. Does anyone have any comments they want to make about the C3 slate? Okay. Can you repeat the question? Can you repeat the question? The question was Does anyone have any comments they want to make about the C3 slate?
on behalf of all people over 40 in physics, we can't see the slate properly. Is it possible to magnify it a bit? Let's Yeah, that's what I wondered also. That, that's right, it goes over in the corner. Oh, I see, okay. Ah, okay, I got you. So, I don't think we can see the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so how do I do that? I can't see it either. It's, it's gone off. Okay, there, there it is. Okay. Uh -huh. And just expand it? Yep. How is that? Green button. Yeah. yeah. Same thing as what's doing full screen. Did you want this or did you want to the bottom? No, no. Get to the scroll bar. It's too small. Yeah. 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 And then you just go up and down, maybe. You've just got to go. You can't get to all. So we can't. We can't get it all at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, there's no way you can get the one. That's why you need it like this. Okay. So now we have at least all the yeses. Okay. The so you can get all the Y's on. Yeah, all the, all the yeses are there, okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, at least, at least, like that. yeah. And then, uh, How can I advance? To close that. Is that, in the is that any better visibility? Yeah. It's not doing that. See, so he's trying to move that over. He says this is what he's saying, but it doesn't. Uh, oh, you mean up here? Oh, how can we do that? I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe a uh, matri nose, you think? Matri? Yeah. Showing the name of that. Yeah. I think it's on the view. View. Mm. Does anybody know how to do that? Because <laughs> I don't know how to use a man. Yeah. Let me do the following. This we don't need. Okay. No, we're getting help. Just one second. 
We just sure. need to take the top. Yeah, the let, me, let me do that. Okay. I need my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Can I borrow glasses? <laughs> oh, it's not working. <laughs> positive 1.5. It's weird. It usually works. Oh, oh, there we go. And then, do you want to hide these? Yes. Yeah, hide, hide. Okay. Uh, keep the C3 the so Hide that one. Okay. Oh, hide, hide, hide <laughs> column one. Thank you. Sorry. And so, how, how do we do? Hide that? column one. How do how do we hide yes. column one? Um, I usually just uh, right click, but the, the click is different from my computer. Mm -hmm. um, control click. Control click. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, hide. Okay. Hide. This. And do you want to hide this as well? No. It's no, no that's good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have to you. do that for everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But then I don't see how to move to. Oh, there. I need that to go yeah. to the next one. So I think we're set now. Where are we now? We're at 166, so if you go here, 150. Does yeah. it change that? that, that it's changed enough. Okay, that's good. You've got the first 14, which is the slate, and then if we need them underneath, the people have got to leave. Ah, yes, the nose. Okay. Uh, it's not quite fine because I can't close. Oh, I see. Sorry, a microphone, I can't hear you. Could you please say the name of the commission? C3 means C3 what is statistical physics. Yeah, for all the commissions, because I don't know all the numbers. Okay, thank you. What does this mean? She wants the name of the commission as well as the number. Oh, good Lord. He will call them when he displays them. He will mention them. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have the list there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, you the, the, one, the, the current one is statistical <laughs> physics. The, the C3 is statistical physics. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that is a good thought that we do that. Yes, I think so. And, and C2 was the commission on, on symbols and units. Okay, so here's where we're going to get in trouble. Well, do we want to save the changes? Or? It's just a size, right? <coughs> Let's see what happens there. Nope. Right, so now you've got to size it. 150? Yeah, yeah, We have to do that for each one? Yeah, you do, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you make this, make this bigger? In the corner? Under the green. Under the green? You want to make it complete? Full screen? Full screen. Yeah. Okay, look at the full screen. You green up. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's good. Is it? Uh, yeah, you've got, just got to pull this over. It's not coming over. So. What happened? You managed nope. to hide something. Yep. I, I always use numbers. I avoid Excel except when I've got to sh I always use numbers. I avoid Excel except when I've got to show it to people that work on other machines and Macs. Mm -hmm. I think we can see this without... Uh, this is, we need the, this is 
to insert here. There should be tools. Okay. Yeah. That's okay now. No, it's okay. Well, for this one. For this one. <laughs> Sit there, we may need you. Yeah, we may need you again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do that. Oh, you can? I, I can, yes, of course. Okay. So, where are we now? At C4? C4 is astroparticle physics. Will you give the name when C4 is, is a commission on astroparticle physics. Any comments on C4? Go on to C5. C5, while we're working to get it up, is the Commission on Low Temperature Physics. And we're back to where we were. Yeah. There's the view. So we're on C okay. C five comments on C five. John? John? Yeah. Yes, yes. John? Yeah. So the first comment is that I hope the John, member of the uh, Czech Republic National Liaison um, Committee is not going to be at the GA because the name of their nominee doesn't appear on this slate. I think we discussed that and that was attributed to a software error, but they're not going to know that. Um, the second thing is that um, when I, as uh, chairman of C5 and actually a VP on the Executive Council, uh, received a copy of this slate, I was asked to comment, um, and I did, um, on the question I just referred to and a number of other uh, counts. Um, and this was due to the fact that the nomination subcommittee, and I understand the difficulty of the job it has, has made, made, a, made a couple of changes. Um, and um, what I would urge then in this journey uh, that IUPEP is on from the old days when the commissions were selected by the fiat of the... Uh, Secretary General, as Bruce described it, to the system that came in in 2014, <clears throat> that we have the opportunity for a little bit more iteration on the, on the slates after the um, nomination subcommittee has been through its process. Um, 
And so it was in the spirit of that that I wrote to the um, nomination subcommittee and it's in that spirit that I'm making the following uh, comments. <clears throat> um, C5 uh, met at our Type A conference on August the 12th to consider the slate of nominations that was existent at that time. <clears throat> um, and we did so considering geographical uh, balance and gender. We've taken the number of women from one to three. Um, at that time, I didn't think I imagined or had any idea that um, further nominations could be made to the slate um, following the, that, the time of our meeting, which was the middle of August. So the GAs operate on three-year cycles. <clears throat> the deadline for the nominations is the 31st of August. CFO have held its meeting two weeks before that. So I kind of thought that the slate was the slate at that point. <clears throat> um, then there's some, uh, th there's some issues around the fact that the number of shares for India has been uh, dramatically increased. I believe that's a very good thing. Um, and so there was then an issue of it would be nice to have a member from India on the C5 slate. I had some misunderstandings how that happened, um, but the nomination appeared in this, in this window between the middle of August and uh, um, the, end, the, the end of August. <clears throat> I point out at this stage that the... Um, Vice Chair of C5 is from India. <coughs> so I'm happy with that, that, that change that the uh, nomination subcommittee made. But uh, we had a, 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 voting, uh, a voting procedure and some of the names that went forward were so unanimously agreed that they weren't subject to that voting procedure. And what I see here is a name that was uh, universally agreed should be on. It now has an N next to their name. Um, and somebody who was subject to the voting procedure um, and failed that voting procedure <coughs> it has a yes next to their name. <coughs> and so... Um, We've had, a we've had a communication um, that was based on uh, now the quality of these two candidates, which are both from European countries. Um, in the context of the uh, overall uh, geographical um, distribution across commissions, <coughs> um, and I'm urging that that has to be taken into consideration and as has been said from the chair um, the number of nominations doesn't always uh, coincide uh, with, the, with the number of votes <clears throat> but there's another important um, issue and that is the quality and the activity of the commissions in fulfilling C5's mission and that's determined by um, the quality of the uh, members. And certainly on C5, uh, we've got a very good sense as to um, who the right people are and can make these judgments. <clears throat> After all, <laughs> we had our meeting at our main Type A conference. And so engagement with the main type A conference of, in our discipline is an important thing to take into, in, into, take into consideration. And it was on that basis that we made our judgment. We need to have um, young and active people um, to make the commissions more overall, more, dyna more dynamic. We made our choices in that spirit. 
as I said, taking into account the other parameters. And um, so that's why I would like the, um, and I've been asking for the, uh, um, the, the, the slate to be changed, and that's a switch of two names on the slate that was posted up there a moment ago. I think the uh, nomination subcommittee does a very, very difficult job. There are many parameters it has to take into account. It is very concerned about geographical balance. But then there has, be, has to be some wiggle room involving the council and the, uh, and the commissions post them drawing up that slate to ensure that other important things are taken into consideration. Some things, these are details. These are details that the commissions are aware of. Um, and uh, so there needs to be another iteration, and that's what I'm respectfully asking for now in this case. Thank you for your time. Well, John, uh, after discussing uh, that exact matter uh, with you yesterday, is that better? I, I, I think that um, that we did understand your position and went back to consider your suggestion of uh, replacing uh, one of the members, Cristiano, I believe it was, with the Sudero, and uh, looked at the impact of that. Um, and after discussing it for a considerable amount of time last night, uh, the, um, the subcommittee decided to stick with the slate as we as we have presented it there. There's one thing that I wanted to point out. Uh, unfortunately, oh, do you have the shares versus uh, yeah, nominations? Yeah, I'll put that up. Can you put that up? Because I have it here, but I don't want to try to move this again. Right, okay. I'll put you on the plug. Ah, uh, yes. If you want to point to someone, that's your point. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, I wanted to look at the shares for uh, Italy. Italy is Italy is somewhere. Italy? Okay. Okay. But, but I wanted to, to be able to see here for myself to, to speak to John now that uh, Italy has uh, 12, 12 shares and uh, we have ended up um, with 11. Is that? Uh, yeah, after uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I think that John's uh, proposal uh, that we were considering was uh, removing uh, the one from Italy and replacing it with Sudero from Spain. And if, if we do that, what we do is... If we do that, looking, looking at Italy, uh, there, there are 12 shares, they have 11 um, persons, and if we remove uh, Cristiano, we decrease them even further from uh, their, their 
allotted shares, taking it down to 10. Whereas if we um, put Tudoro in, and that's adding another to Spain, Spain has eight shares, and we would take them up to 12, which is considerably more than uh, the number of shares. And, and, and thinking about it, um, we have the impression that uh, Cristiano is not a detriment to C5. Uh, and we looked at your comparison between Sudoro and, um, and Cristiano and uh, decided that trying to make this change that you suggested is going to make for an imbalance in shares versus um, nominees. Did Mar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, the one of the issues that we need to uh, consider is that the uh, commission, when they make their assessments, recommendations, etc., they think about the balance geographically, the balance in terms of subfields of their subject, in terms of gender balance, etc. They have no idea about this uh, overall uh, structure. So, you know, we can do excellent work and propose a new member from, let's say, a country that has already over, uh, already more uh, continuing members than shares, then it's a waste of time. So my question is, can we find a mechanism to actually provide all the commissions with some uh, picture of what is at least the ongoing, uh, for the next three years, the ongoing uh, membership, so that we know that if there are already many members, say, from a country all, all over the mm -hmm. IOPAP, not to try to appoint somebody from the same country. We have no idea. Uh, what is the situation at the moment, and it will be helpful to avoid issues that you're just raising here, that is over uh, appointment in countries that have lesser shares. You will always have it if you don't have this data, because we are looking at it from a point of view of our uh, balance, and we don't see the full balance. Right. If I could make a comment on that, that is a significant problem, that commissions are, are doing their balancing of their people, and they have no idea what another commission is doing. Um, this time around, I believe commissions had access to a table um, which showed them what other commissions had done. But I don't know whether they did or not. I believe they did. But it, they, it wasn't terribly well explained to them, even if they did. Uh, so it's a, it is a complicated process. And if we got all of the commission chairs in the room and said, and we got them there for a week, and we said, OK, there are too many people from Spain on the commissions. There are too few people from these countries. Who is in a position to exchange one of their Sp Spanish members for one of these others? I mean, that would be the, a, a much better way to do it. Uh, it's just that the feeling was that doing it that way would take up much more time. Um, Yeah, I just wonder if, uh, let's say, three commissions nominate somebody from the same country that's already oversubscribed based on the number of shares, how's that decision made? I mean, was this example just the only one that uh, oversubscribed a particular country, or were there other commissions, and then how was it decided the, among all of them the, the which one 
commissions don't know what another one is doing. No, but you do. Uh, no, 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 we don't. No, but we don't actually look don't, at the You end. get these lists, and apparently. I, I, I think your, your, your question, though, if, if I can address it, is um, that the commissions were all sent the, um, the slates that the subcommittee had come up with and uh, asked uh, t to comment prior to this meeting. So yeah, if, I, if, if they were satisfied or willing to accept what the commission had come up with, then they would not be commenting during this uh, session or on that. I, I think your question is, were there other commissions where the... No, I don't care necessarily in this particular instance, but mm -hmm. it m in other words, you're sent a slate, I guess, of all 20 names or something and preferences or s from each commission and the committee, in its wisdom, changes some of those based, among other things, on chair allot on share allotments. That's right. Um, some, I could imagine easily that this need to align the chairs mm -hmm. <clears throat> would affect more than one commission for the same country. How is that decision made? Well, uh, what I was trying to say is that um, th the proposed slates from the subcommittee were, were sent to all of the commission chairs. Um, and so they had a chance to comment and, and decide whether the slate produced by the subcommittee was acceptable or, or that they could agree to it. And in most cases, I guess, what, what, what's happened, I mean, there may have been some cases where there was a oversubscription uh, above and beyond the number of shares that a particular country uh, had, uh, but they were, the, the uh, commission chairs were okay with what, this, what the um, subcommittee recommended. Yeah. Uh -huh. May I address it? Uh, also, I mean, that happened also to other commissions, also in C4, for example, a Spaniard was then replaced by somebody from Norway. Uh, and in our case, we could accept it because the competence was about the same, uh, so that was no issue. What I would like to remind people is what we have done in the past in C4 in such cases when we were lacking some competence, some field in the commission, we always can appoint associate members for associate members and we have done this always uh, for regional balance but also for competences in the commission. So that is, that's a flexibility that the commission, all the commissions have in the end and, and that worked out very well at least in our cases. Mm -hmm. And we treat it in the same way as the ordinary members. Okay. Yeah. yeah, can I uh, propose a solution for this? I think that in this specific case, because the guy who got, uh, I mean, lots of votes, but he is taken out and with some kind of uh, guy not so well appreciated getting up. So my, uh, I'm also working on the commission C9. So my proposal will be, so right now we report to, to you with alphabetic name. But if we come up with a report, with a voting kind of a list, then based on that, when you uh, considering this table to do the minor change, maybe for those people at the back, almost the bottom of those, then you make some kind of minor change to adjust for this kind of a... Yeah, in our C5, C9, and we have all... I mean, for those candidates, we have a vote who should be in this list. So that's, uh, but when we report it to them, uh, it's alphabetic. So, yeah, yeah that's it's, uh, just one. John. John, behind you, John. Yes, you, 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 could, do, you, you could do that. Closer to the um, mouth, but, John. But, pardon? Closer to the mouth. Yeah, so you, you, you could do that. But, I mean, in... In this case, um, uh, uh, we're spending a lot of time discussing the, 
the principle because there's a specific instance where in C5 we think that it's not, it, it's not right, um, that, that there are local C5 circumstances that are important. The change of one person uh, in a total number of 250 is uh, perturbative. It's at the sub 1% 1, 1 level. If you look at the list, uh, you can point out the geographical imbalances in, uh, in Spain and Italy. You can also point them out in uh, South Africa, three shares, uh, seven committee. Uh, the Russia was referred to before, 18 shares and 15, 15 committee. So one-to-one uh, -one, uh, correspondence doesn't exist in, uh, uh, overall. Uh, and, th and there must be a, a step in, in, in the process where w w when the commission is asked to comment, and there is such a strong comment, it's taken in, into account. Because after all, as far as I can see, in uh, a 21st century open, transparent uh, process uh, that the nomination subcommittee is acting on behalf of, surely, uh, of council. It's an efficient way of arriving at these decisions, taking all the parameters in, into account, but it's acting on behalf of council. And so then it's surely it's subject then to um, uh, its decisions are subject to scrutiny by council, which council. is what we're, yes, that's what what we're, we're doing, doing now. now. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing now. yeah. So I, I, I guess the question is how, how, how do we proceed with this at this point? Do, 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 um, do you want to make a recommendation? Uh, the, 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 there has been a, a suggestion in an attempt to broker a way forward. He, he highlighted that uh, um, in other cases where commissions faced the same problem, they have resorted to the option of associate membership to get people um, on the commission. Um, that, that's the first point. And the second point that the um, President-elect has raised is that uh, when the NSC was um, looking at the problem as late as last night, um, we went back to, 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 to the table, did the comparison, and were satisfied that uh, uh, Roberto Cristiano, um, even though he may not be as um, um, attractive to the Commission as was painted by the Commission Chair, um, was not underqualified to, in terms of competitiveness. Uh, so there are, there are those two issues. One, the consideration of associate membership, if it will to satisfy the, the commission, because then the person does become a member of the commission, but under the associate tech. Um, the other issue that uh, perhaps uh, one should reiterate is that the, the the committee was doing this specifically to address the share balance with respect to Spain, which was going to be taken from 10 to 11, and with the benefit of hindsight that um, this country was also similarly affected at the last GA, and Bruce has tried to point out that there have been experiences where uh, countries were uh, so um, infuriated about this, they sometimes reneged on paying up their shares. So those are some of the sensitivities that the um, NSC um, weighed uh, when it took the decision. I see in the table, uh, there are countries uh, which uh, have shares, but uh, there were no people nominated, uh, and uh, the committee did not take care about them. Do they do not pay their fees? Uh, why we did not care about those countries like Greece, uh, Chile, for example? The, the office uh, did a lot of work to try and persuade countries that ha had made no nominations to put in nominations. Some of the countries that have made no nominations uh, 
haven't paid for a long time and feel they shouldn't make nominations for that reason. And we'll be discussing some of those later. So uh, those countries, they did not pay. So mm. that was the reason. There, yes. are, there are countries that don't pay. And the rules are that if you don't pay for more than three years, you don't get a vote in the General Assembly. If you don't pay for more than six years, you uh, become an observer and you, have, and you have no rights to have anybody on a commission. Those are the, the rules in our statutes about how we handle non-payers. But we also handle non-payers by trying to persuade them to pay. Um, John, I think. So this, is, this is my final remark then. So we need to be clear uh, that the decision-making body on the slate of nominations going forward to the General Assembly is the nomination subcommittee of the IUPAP Executive Council. That's the status quo that you... I, I, I don't think that's true. I, I think that the, actually the council uh, makes the decision. And we, we are proposing here uh, what we've come, come up with as a slate to put forward, but we don't do that. Uh, the, the council decides if this slate can go forward. Okay. So how's that decision going to be made in this case then? Well, we're in the process right now of... Okay. of uh, yeah, okay, so then I, I would pr propose then that, uh, that the IUPAP uh, Executive Council needs to vote on... on, on uh, my proposal is that Cristiano is replaced by Sudro on the grounds of uh, competence. To be able to move forward, uh, John has proposed that we vote on the proposal that the slate for C5 be changed back to the one provided, back to the 14 members of commission provided by the commission. No, sorry, not what, to the, we, we, because one, was cha one, one change was agreed to. Right. I'm sorry. So that the change be that the member from Italy in the slate be deleted and the, and the member from Spain be put in that place. That's the change being proposed by John. Uh, so that, that is the question that will be asked of the council to decide that. Yeah. But Karl let, Heinz has a let, let me ask a question just to understand it. So Spain came up, I mean, by, there were 14 slates and only eight shares. And then uh, something I didn't understand. Did you approach all the 14 commissions then and ask them whether they could consider replacing this pen, uh, Spanish delegate by, by or mem, uh, um, uh, possible member by someone else, or did you only approach a couple of commissions, like, I mean, C5 and C4? We, 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 we did no. not propose. Uh, right now, John is making a, a proposal. Uh, no, no, but just no. I'd like to understand the process, how you do this. I mean, you identify there are too many Spanish um, uh, people named uh, to be commission members and then you try to reduce it to eight or something more and the question is how you how you do this I mean do you approach all the commissions who have Spanish nominations uh, and ask them whether they could consider this or you only approach a couple for specific reasons okay you, you have to look at the commissions where taking out a Spanish person meant you could put in somebody where you had a candidate from an underrepresented uh, country. So the, the, the process that the nomination subcommittee went through was to look, go, go through each commission where there were, where they had uh, Spanish nominees, each commission where they had South African, each commission where they had Brazilian, and find commissions where removing that person made sense in, uh, and, per and permitted you to put in somebody from an underrepresented country. And we're, talk we're 
the position, the situation in, in C5 is that that's a situation where they found they could make that move. There are quite a few others around the place where they did make the move. Johnny, did you want to say something? No, I, th I think you covered what I said. It, it was not an arbitrary process. It did not only uh, target C5. So when you are trying to balance, you do what you said. You, you look for an overrepresented country within you check across all commissions. And this, this minor, these adjustments have been done in other commissions to achieve the same objective. And in this case of balancing Italy, it was in C5 where the Spaniards were overrepresented and the Italians were underrepresented. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, my suggestion is uh, Instead of voting now, we keep in mind the C5 has this request like to have one in Spain. Then we discuss other commissions because like our C6 okay. and the certain countries we, we think is flexible, but the certain members we really want to have. So I think after go through all the commissions and then we see which members we can exchange for others and then we vote later because that, it's... That, that is what the nomination subcommittee did. Uh, what you're saying is we should look at all the other commissions and then put this vote. You said happy with doing it that way, John? Okay. Kennedy, back to you. So when we put it to vote? No, we'll vote after you do After we do all of these. You need to plug this back in or you won't get anywhere. C6 is next. We, we just done C5. Okay. Yeah. 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 C6 is up now. Okay. <laughs> so uh, our commission uh, initially received uh, 21 nominations, but uh, some of them, they are um, already served the two terms, so they cannot be re-elected. And the other thing we um, recognize before we proceed to make a recommendation was we are low in women. So we mainly t uh, made two uh, efforts after receive a nomination from liaison committees. One was we reached out to uh, nominate the three additional women um, candidates, and the two of them uh, very enthusiastic to uh, to be considered and the one citing for overcommitment. So we are very happy this two from this uh, um, jo um, join uh, uh, Trotsky and also from Poland and the Marcia Barbosa from Brazil and those are rec recruited by our commission. Second is we really need a member from our for organizing our next international conference. We have decided that the conference will be in Madrid, uh, Brazil, uh, Spain, so we need one from Spain. There was a nomination from Spain, but that, that is in different city. So because, because the, uh, the uh, conference would be in Madrid, so the, uh, we will be jointly organized with European Biophysics Society Associate, Association. Uh, so those are the, our. Uh, so we added. The, so those three are the new we uh, we nominated from a commission. Uh, in addition, we uh, considered the geographical balance and the uh, uh, women in physics. So uh, 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 other thing we did is. Uh, I thought it's important to involve the recommended the chair in the process. 
So when we seek input from the Commission, we divide it into two steps. The first step, we decide who we would recommend as the next chair, vice chair, and the secretary. And once we finish that, we get the, those are more involved, uh, not the vice chair because he is not a current member. And then we discuss the uh, nomination. Um, uh, we seek the input from the whole commission, but the we did the changes in order to reach this gender diversity and the geographical diversity. So we are very happy with this because this is all we uh, recommended. So thank you. So then should we move on to Okay. There is no chair. There is a chair. I don't know it's a chair. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now we have C8 up. Any comments? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm uh, representing C8 president. I, I'm current vice president. I'd like just to note that uh, our vice chair is a woman. Not only members, we have a vice chair as a woman. We, we can't hear you. Just, uh, just to note that. Oh, she, she, the, the vice chair um, is from the United Kingdom. She's a woman. Oh. Not, uh, not only a member, but she's in the central uh, part of the commission. Okay, okay. noted. Anything else on C8? Yeah, I'm trying to get this in there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, we needed to say that, I suppose. Thank you. So what is C9? You gonna Okay. C nine is C nine is Commission on Magnetism. Okay. Any comments on C nine that's up there now? Then we move on. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm oh, hiding yeah. the, the secretary. This time. Unhide. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So we're moving on to C10. Comment? C10 is uh, condensed matter. Can you raise your hand so they can get the microphone to you?
Yes, I'm the uh, chair for C10, Condensed Matter Physics and uh, Structural Dynamics. Um, for our C10, we received uh, 20 uh, recommendations from the liaison committee. And um, actually, we have a relatively simple job because you notice we have five, uh, six female candidates. Um, so uh, after trying to balance among different fields and uh, geographical considerations and also the active involvement of the current members, we have come up with the following list of 14 members. In particular, the chair uh, will be Professor Laura Green, uh, who was the uh, vice chair, now promoted to be the chair, <coughs> who is also currently the APS president, a uh, very prominent uh, leader. Then the vice chair will be Hartmut uh, Leppner from Germany, who was our secretary in the past three years. We also promote Professor uh, Tawa uh, No from um, current member to uh, secretary from Korea. So uh, altogether, you notice we have uh, four female members and uh, one female being the chair, the other three uh, female members from China, from Taiwan, also from Austri Austria. Um, so another thing I'd like to also call your attention, we were debating whether the uh, nomination from um, this particular, we will pull down the list to the bottom. Um, there is one particular candidate, uh, she's from Tunisia. Um, she actually has been uh, two-term members of C10, and she was nominated to run for the vice chair. Um, after you look at the list, Yes, uh, it's a member number 19 from Tunisia, um, Dr. Maliki. And she actually has been uh, two time members of C10, and she was nominated to run for the vice chair. But uh, in looking over her uh, um, recommendations, as well as um, the, the, the amount of uh, activeness in the past two terms, so we decided. Um, uh, to, to prefer uh, Dr. Uh, Hartmann Leffner from Germany as our vice chair. So altogether, I think we have fulfilled the requirements of uh, several parts. Uh, we have four female members, in particular the commission, ch commission chair is being a female leader. Uh, furthermore, there is also a requirement we like to have some uh, industrial connections or for application I think particularly the, the member from uh, Spain has fulfilled that uh, preference. So I think uh, overall we are very happy about this, uh, uh, the, the slate of representation. Thank you. Thank you. So we move on to C11. C11 is particles and fields. Juan wants to say something. Okay, so we, we received uh, 22 nominations from the country liaisons, and uh, I think that we are quite happy to, to have elected or to have proposed as the managing team uh, uh, three women, which I I don't know, but it's probably the first time that a commission has three women in the managing team. From the total number of uh, nominees that we received, uh, what we have proposed has, has not been in coincidence with what you have been uh, electing in your uh, proposal. And coming back to the discussion that we had before, I believe that it is because of the uh, getting the balance between all the countries and the, and the commissions, but probably, I mean, the, the one of, we received many, I mean, most of the uh, uh, proposals we received were from European countries, and then we, we thought that it was good to rotate all the, the European countries such that no European country could repeat. And that has not been, the, I mean, it's not, this is not fulfilled in, the, in this proposal, and that is something that I, I send you an email uh, telling you about the, the, the situation and I don't know whether you, 
you want to reconsider that, uh, that proposal. So to, to include other European countries which have not been before in the, in the Commission. So do, do you want to propose a change one? In the slide yes, there are, there are three European countries. I mean, I, assuming okay. Russia is also uh, considered a European country, which are repeating as delegates in the Commission. And there are many European countries which were not before and have not been accepted. So we would uh, maybe propose to countries, European countries, that are, uh, to have their delegates in the new Commission which are not considered, and some of the two which are repeating should then be taken out. So you, if my, um, I can't uh, quite pick up exactly what you were proposing that we should change, if you are. Well, I think that we have, you know, we have three countries which repeat which are Sweden, Hungary, and Russia from Europe. And especially having a many proposals from European countries, I mean, we should open the possibility to other European countries to come in the Commission. I would, you know, I think that delegates, delegates from Germany or from Portugal are good <coughs> candidates to be included. So, when we finally get through all of them, uh, I guess that's when we'll decide on how to vote uh, on the uh, suggested changes, the proposed changes. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what the change is. I don't understand it, Susan. Maybe you can. Okay, can you? Uh, I think if we're going to have a vote at the end mm -hmm. to propose changes to the slate, we need a specific proposal. Okay. Someone out, someone in. Well, that's, then I would propose that the, that the delegates from Sweden and Hungary would come out and then the, the delegates from Germany and Portugal would be considered in. Which one? From Sweden out. And the which one in? Germany and Portugal. We, we may need for you to just restate that when we get to voting. Sorry? Sweden out. May I just ask a question? Let me try and understand which one goes in because I couldn't hear. Yes, Sweden and Hungary. You want Sweden out? Yes. You want which and to replace Hungary. Sweden? Sweden, either uh, Portugal. What? Portugal. Antonio Nofre from Portugal. Port, Port, I think, did you say Portugal? Or? Yes. Yeah. It's down. Portugal. Sweden by Portugal. Sweden out Portugal. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And uh, Hungary should be replaced by Germany. Dieter Seppenfeld. And Hungary out? out? Is that what you're saying? Thank you very much. Just to really understand the situation, the list as it stands right now on the slate, is it the list as proposed by the Commission? No, it's the list as proposed by the nomination subcommittee. Okay, good. Thank you. But just to follow up with, if I may, I mean, the changes that are being proposed now, they are things that were recommended in the original proposal of the Commission. Yeah. Okay, I, th 
I think we should move on. Well, we've, we're already hmm? well into tea time, but you don't need tea. C12? Yes. Education? No, C C12, C12 is, is uh, nuclear physics. I would like to make a little comment on this result. We got the largest number of female members in the new commission, seven male and seven female, so we have the gender equality. <laughs> 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 I'm very happy. <laughs> but it was not at all difficult because we had a very large number of nominations. We had 26 nominations for seven new uh, places. So we had a large uh, number of very good names mm -hmm. and it was easy to select and of course we had the goodwill to select very competent and uh, brilliant ladies. Uh, we could uh, have, uh, we, I know that it is not supposed to respect uh, geographical uh, um, balance it is supposed to mainly to have a balance of different areas of nuclear physics and every uh, field of expertise be uh, represented. Uh, we did this, but also we thought that there are some countries, we have a very important nuclear physics program as China, as, as France, uh, and then we tried to satisfy also this criteria. We wanted, it is already the second time that we nominate someone from South Africa because they also have a very important nuclear physics program. The ETEMBA Labs is a very important lab and they have uh, big projects for upgrade and radioactive beams, but we did not succeed. It is the second time that the Commission nominates, but then we do not get, but we are uh, thinking about trying to put someone in among the associate uh, members of the committee uh, of the commission, and then it, it, we will have this contact with the. So that's what I wanted right. to say. Thank you, Olinka. C13 is physics for development. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think C13 is quite satisfied with the current uh, proposal for the, uh, for the slate. Uh, we just uh, made a comment that there was no uh, representative from uh, Latin America in the initial proposal, and uh, now we suggest that the uh, a member from Colombia, actually a current member of C13, that will continue. So apart from that, uh, we are, I mean, satisfied with the current slate. C14 is education. C14 had a face-to-face -face meeting on the last uh, July at Dublin and discussed uh, this uh, matter. And uh, so our uh, proposal list uh, from the nomination subcommittee is, uh, has only one uh, change uh, from our proposal, uh, changes uh, from uh, China to India. Uh, 
I know that China is now a very strong country in physics education research. But on the other hand, I understand that the nomination subcommittee did a very difficult work to solve the many body problem. That's it's very difficult to find the best solution. So, as the chair of the C14. I'd like to accept this proposal from the nomination subcommittee. Thank you. C15? Yeah, C15 is atomic, molecular, and optical physics. Okay, so C15, present, present situation now we are more or less satisfied. And uh, of course, again, we consider the balance of the countries and the region and of course the field. And uh, at, the, at the very beginnings, in the nomination, we had only two female members. So we really fighted to find additional two female members. And we got these female members from Italy and Spain. So the male members are replaced by the female members from Italy and Spain. And the other issue is uh, <coughs> maybe not the <coughs> key point, but uh, Presently, the vice chair is Dominique, is very listed, but originally she, original, presently she is now secretly, and she preferred to be a step down to the members. But according to the IUPAP law, it's not allowed or selected. Then finally she agreed to be a vice chair, and so the, now it's in a very good balance. And, Argentina, France, and Korea is the officers members, and maybe that's all. Thank you very much. Move on. Thank you. C16 is plasma physics. You can start talking. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think that here also all the proposal has been discussed by the commissions as well. Uh, we try to make a balance between the various fields of plasma physics, which is relatively broad. And I think that this, uh, this list, as it stands here, uh, also covers the uh, regional uh, balance. We have one, two, three, four female members. I think that it's a very good proposal. Good. So we move on. Uh, C-17 is uh, photonics and something else, is it? Yeah. Laser <laughs> physics and photonics. Deb, did you want to say something? Put your hand up. So you um, so we had 19 nominations, um, four female nominations. Uh, we, we got an extra one when we closed in the first instance with just three. Um, and we've got a good balance across the commission of uh, people who work in large uh, research centres, people who work in smaller research groups, as a lot of tabletop science uh, gets done within our commission, uh, and good uh, geographical um, representation. So there were two changes to our initial recommendations made by the nominations committee, but we had the greatest difficulty in um, finalising 14 to recommend when we meet, met to discuss it in any case. So it was always going to be an unhappy story for some pe members that would have been excellent members for the commission, um, but overall we're um, happy with the uh, slate as it stands. Thank you. Thank you. 
the way up to C18. C18 is mathematical physics. We, we need our technician here to, uh -huh. to make this change. Uh, here, I can close this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, C18. Yeah. Drag everything in. It looks like we are. Even more. Yeah, okay, great. Right. Right, right, right. Okay, so C18. Um, <coughs> mathematical physics, um, we have tried very hard not only to have geographical balance but also thematic balance because mathematical physics comprises a lot of different topics. Um, in the end we had uh, only two women so we nominated another two so we are now at four on the slate and um, <coughs> the nomination subcommittee then uh, asked us to change the person from South Africa and I realized that this is because there were too many nominations from South Africa overall mm -hmm. and uh, so we did that, we put in the member from the Russian Federation um, so um, we did our best to balance this of course um, in the light of the present discussion there is a member of Spain on the commission and um, frankly speaking, of course, he's someone I'd like to keep because he represents an important topic. But if you know, if share shareholder value is the most important thing, then uh, one might discuss this. Did you want to propose a change or? You're okay with the way it is? I actually don't want to propose a change, but I can say right away that I will support uh, John Saunders' uh, move after what's in the vote. So then Spain has 12 people. So just to be clear, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understood you, you. Do you want to propose a change or no? I, as it's, uh, I'm happy with it as it okay. stands. C19 is astro, uh, astrophysics. Casina. Uh, we are happy with your improvements for the commission. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm trying to. Yeah. There. You're happy? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Should we move on to C20? Like this? Right. C C20 is computational physics. <coughs> yes, we got the 22 nominations and now we uh, made uh, the 14 as requested as considering this geographic balance as well as uh, so four member women, four female members in that. So basically I, I didn't see any problem there. Okay. Good. Thank you. So yes. Regina has a question. Actually, I looked uh, to the distribution of uh, places uh, for countries, and I remember there was, there was one commission, 13, uh, which asked to re remove uh, Sweden and uh, Hungary from 
the members and to replace uh, by other countries. But uh, Sweden and Hungary are not, uh, 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 how to say, over-presented. They are under-presented. Yeah. Uh, and uh, those countries which we propose, they, are, they will be over-presented. So have you accepted uh, this proposal by the Commission or you will still uh, uh, discuss this question? Virginia pointed out that the changes proposed by Juan for C11 uh, involve taking out people in underrepresented countries and putting in people in overrepresented countries. Yeah, okay. That is why the pro changes were proposed by the nomination subcommittee, and Juan is going back to what the what, uh, proposing to go back to what the commission uh, put in. So a question over there. I have a question regarding geographic distribution. I noticed some commissions, uh, explicitly Commission 17, there was no member, if I'm not wrong, no member from Latin America. Is that because there were no, no, no enemies from Latin America? It's there. There was a nomination from Brazil, which the Commission recommended on the original slate, um, but that was one of the changes made by the nomination commission. Okay, thank you. Nomination committee. On the grounds that Brazil had way more members okay, in that's commissions that's than, than it had shares. But there are other shares. countries only from Brazil, no other countries from Latin America, I believe. Uh, no. No, okay. And Argentina is also overrepresented. <laughs> you go. Um, on behalf of the working group um, five on women in physics I would like to say a heartfelt thank you to all those commissions which worked to find women who can serve um, on those commissions one of the major problems um, is that the percentage of women declines with age or seniority leaving us with fewer mentors and leaders and role models and so what you've accomplished is really, really useful. Thank you. So I, I think at this point we have uh, two proposals, C5, and uh, which was the other one? C11. 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 And I guess that uh, basically we will have two motions yeah. to, uh, to put forward. Bill? I just noticed that um, looking at, at, at all these slates, that in C11 there is a, um, uh, a proposal for uh, a Spanish representative and in the, the, the under list, the waiting list, is a, uh, an Italian woman and while I understand that the, that the Spanish representative was, was someone who was very much desired by, by C11, um, I'm just noticing that, that switching those would um, compensate for the, uh, the country imbalance that's uh, proposed by, uh, by C5, and maybe C11 could uh, 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 propose or appoint that uh, Spanish uh, uh, delegate as a um, as an associate member in order to get the, the expertise. I'm not proposing this at all based on on anything having to do with the the the, the quality of the people, but simply noting yeah. that 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 opportunity well, he's exists. He's back there, so <laughs> we can get his reaction to. Okay. I mean, the the proposed nominee from. Uh, uh, nomination from C11 for the Spanish delegate. I mean, it's not in the in the proposed list of the of the 14 members for the new commission. Especially because, you know, the, the, there was this uh, kind of uh, understanding that countries which already had a representation on the commission should not repeat. So I don't think that you can apply that. 
because he is not, he's not considered in the new team. So, we, we have two proposals in front of us, yep. which I think we need to vote on at this stage. Uh, so the first one is a proposal from C5 uh, in, the, in the slate proposed by the nomination subcommittee that the uh, nominee from Italy be deleted and the, be replaced by the nominee from Spain. That, um, I think we've had adequate discussion of all the matters, so I think we, we'll just simply put the motion. Those in favour of this change? Hands high so they can be counted. Okay. Uh, I, saw I saw four. Four. Okay. Yeah. Four. Four. Four in favour. Those against. Those ab those abstain. Those abstaining. Okay. Motion is carried. Four votes in favour, no votes against, and many people abstaining. I didn't count the abstentions. The second proposal is from C11 to delete the people on the slate proposed by the nomination subcommittee uh, from Hungary and from Sweden from Sweden yep. and to replace those by Sweden, Sweden by Portugal and and the one for so we, which, which are the replacements uh, Portugal is one but I couldn't hear the other one yeah. hmm? Germany. Germany. Germany okay Sweden and Germany. Um, so those in favour of that motion. The all arguments have all been given. The arguments, the arguments for the nomination subcommittee movement is that is to replace overrepresented countries by small by. and the committee w wants to go back to what it originally thought. And my understanding of the argument put by Juan is that the committee has a system where it wants to rotate people around countries uh, and, the, and it wants to keep, keep that rotation system in place. Uh, that's why it wants to do this. Uh, very quickly, how are you? No, I want to make a comment. Um, you don't want to say anything? Okay. No, uh, I want we'll, to say something. Oh, later. The, uh, so those in favor of this motion? Can we discuss first? I mean... It's been discussed. I think we're way, way over time. I think we should put the motion. In favor? Three. I, have, I, have, I see two votes in favour. Um, and against? Two, two, against, and two against. Two against and two in favour. Uh, abstentions? Uh, large number of abstentions. Do you want... Do account? I don't see any reason. Okay. The, in the case of a tied vote, I get to cast a deciding vote. This is the only occasion on which I get to vote. 
so I cast a vote in favour of the nomination subcommittee slate. So no change to the C11 slate as proposed here. So uh, we'd still have one more slate to give you a look at. That is the slate for the Executive Council, which I have here. I hope you didn't see the password. <laughs> Too quick for me. So, is that big enough to read? Um, I want to thank, begin by, by thanking the commissions for producing <coughs> some women chairs so that, so that we get uh, we have two women chairs of commissions unfortunately from the point of view of trying to put them onto council they're both from the same country uh, and the nomination subcommittee decided to put Laura Green on uh, from the United States, although she is from the same country as the incoming president. Um, then, going back to the top, uh, president designate is renominated as president to be the president. President, we don't, we do, let me explain. Many organisations have a president elect. When you have a president elect, that person automatically becomes the president. We have someone we call a president designate, which means that we can look at the president designate for three years and see whether we think we want him as president. But we did, we did nominate Sir Kenneth. So, uh, the new president designate, as I explained earlier, the only nomination we received is that of Michel Spiro, the current president of the French Physical Society, uh, and uh, he was a very effective chair of our working group on astroparticle physics, and, and uh, the inaugural chair on that. He did a good job. Uh, he's also been... Um, chair of the, or president, I forget which they call it, of the uh, CERN Council. Um, the very experienced administrator and a very good physicist. Uh, Secretary General, oh, I should, you've got no choice about having me as past president, that's automatic. Um, Secretary General, uh, renomination of Keke Fua. Associate Secretary General, renomination of Rizzani Nemtadi. Uh, Vice President's elected at large. Uh, Vice President elected at large now as a result of the decisions made uh, at our October meeting uh, have a responsibility. Uh, the Vice President elected at large no nomination for, with responsibility for. Um, Finance is Wang Enga from uh, China. Uh, Vice President elected at large with responsibility for the centenary is Monica Pepe Altarelli. Uh, she's continuing term as, as Vice President elected at large. Vice President elected at large as gender champion is Sylvina Ponte Dawson, who was a former chair of uh, Working Group 5. Uh, Vice President elected at large for new members uh, is Natalia Chetty. That's a nomination. Uh, Vitali Kivda is uh, a second term as Vice President elected at large, but now he has to have a job, and the job is responsibility for outreach. Uh, from the Commission chairs, uh, the other people we decided to put on, we thought it was a appropriate to have someone from India. So we, we chose uh, of the two 
Commission Chairs from India, Rao Pandit. Um, and we also thought it was, was a good idea to have someone from Germany on the Council, so of the two Commission Chairs from Germany, which is Ralph Haag. I mentioned Laura Green already. Um, to make up a little bit for the fact that Sweden don't have as many uh, members of commissions, uh, we put the, their, their Vice President on, of C12 from Sweden onto Council. Uh, I think that in the future, the item that we have at the end of the business today about new elements may be important and, and he has uh, been heavily involved in that, so it would be very useful to have him around. Uh, and uh, then the final one, uh, Vice President elected at large from Commission Chairs, Roberto Nardi from Brazil. Those are the proposals that we have for you. Um, there was one other nominee who's sitting in the room uh, for one of these positions that was, was not picked up. Um, any comments? So, Igla. Thanks. I'd like to make a proposal that um, C1 in future also follows um, a target of four women in um, new elections and congratulated on the women proposed here. Right. Well, I'll, I'll uh, I think formally put the motion that this slate be accepted. Those in favour? Against? Okay. Thank you. Um, the, I, I do want to comment, sorry to keep you going, but one comment I want to make. Uh, commissions were very effective in producing women members and now uh, I think we need to ask them to become more effective in producing women officers and women chairs. And I've thought about that. I'll have a proposal to make to you later on. We can have a discussion over... over um, but my suggestion, simply from me, not from council or anybody, is that the one of the three officers uh, of commission should be worn and that there should be no longer than a two-year gap between women commission chairs beginning at counting uh, th this, not two years, two cycles. Uh, so that, that's a suggestion. I, s I toss it up now. You have opportunities to chat about it over, over tea and so on and we'll, we'll talk about it later. Now, uh, we have taken up more than the, the tea time, but I think we have taken up more than the tea time. I think we should, however, give ourselves uh, about I'll have a look at the agenda later, but we'll give ourselves until noon uh, for a quick coffee and uh, we'll come back at noon and restart the agenda. I think it's uh, been an important discussion and it was very important to have the discussion. So thank you for that and thank you for your, your patience in, in hanging in there for it.